focus on it. Well, you're, here's a perfect example. You said uh, 30 years ago you worked for Xerox. That was sort of a lockstep company. Mm -hmm. And so what you had to do is you had to perform what they wanted you to do. And then they moved you around almost like chess pieces saying, OK, well, we're going to put you here. We're going to put you here because you became interchangeable. So you were interchangeable with others because that was. Part, and by the way, you were part of what I will call the covenant. The covenant was if you do what I tell you to do the way I tell you to do it, you will have a job for life. So the performance appraisal wasn't a report card per se. It was just sort of uh, uh, this is what you have to do next year. And this is where you have to live up to next year. So it didn't make you necessarily outstanding or otherwise. In, fa in fact, I, I, I think it makes us more commoditized because it makes us so much like anybody else. And so while that worked in that environment, because loyalty was the design that you did not leave that firm, you stayed with Xerox. And so when you stay somewhere and you have this interchangeable sort of uh, abilities, you stay within the framework of that. So the performance appraisal is more smoke and mirrors. It is not a, a, a declaration of how we actually going to develop you and what is outstanding and unique about who you are. You know, the hardest thing about feedback is moving from good to great. Yeah. See, if you're good, nobody tells you anything because why, why would I spend any more time on you? Why would I do that? I've got to deal with these squeaky wheels or my, my, high, my high potentials. So we don't spend time in the performance appraisal system where we could most leverage it. And to your point, it is demotivating, it is adversarial, and it is not based on behaviors. It's based on conclusions.